Hey Finsters, let's learn how to add new keys to a Python dictionary. Now before diving to the solution to this question, you must be knowing what is a Python dictionary. In short, a Python dictionary is a data structure in Python which allows you to store data in the form of key value pairs. A dictionary is ordered, changeable and it does not allow duplicates. So this means that in a Python dictionary, the keys have to be unique. That means you cannot have duplicate keys in the Python dictionary. Okay, that was a short intro about Python dictionaries. Now let us dive into the mission critical question and discuss how you can add new keys to a Python dictionary. Now as you can see on the screen, D is a dictionary such that it has couple of key value pairs wherein the first key is Python and the first value attached to the key Python is 1. Similarly, the second key is Java and the key attached to it is 4. Now let's say we want to add another key value pair to this dictionary such that the key C++ stores the value 1. Now the easiest way to add this key value pair to your dictionary is to use the subscript notation. The subscript notation is nothing but square bracket notation wherein you have to specify the key which you want to add to the dictionary. Let's go ahead and have a look at how we can do that and things will be clear. So to add the key, you have to use your dictionary name which is D in this case and then you have to use the square bracket notation and within this you have to specify the key which happens to be C++ in our case and then you just have to specify the value which you want to attach to this key, which in this case is 1. Now let's go ahead and print our dictionary before we updated it with the new key. And then let's go ahead again and print our dictionary after we have updated it with the new key. Now let's go ahead and execute this code and let's see what happens. And there we go. As you can see, initially this was the dictionary. And after we added the new key C++ and the value attached to it, which is one, we have the new dictionary, which now has three key value pairs. Now, as you can see, as I mentioned that a dictionary cannot have duplicate keys, but a dictionary can definitely have different keys having the same values. As in this case, Python also has the value one. The key C++ also has the value one. Now let's see what happens if we try to use a different value attached to the same key. That is now let's use Python as the key again and let's try to attach a different value and let's see what happens. And as you can see in this case, instead of a new key being added to the dictionary, the same key got updated with a new value. Thus this clearly states that you cannot use the same key to store two different values in the dictionary. If you do that, then the previous value will be overridden by the new value. So let's go ahead and change this. Let's say that the key C++ has the value 2 attached to it and let's go ahead and execute our code again. And there we go. We have now successfully added the new key to the dictionary with the help of the subscript notation or the square bracket notation. Now you can also add a key with no value attached to it in a dictionary. To do this, you just have to assign none as the value to the key. So let's say we want to add a key which goes by the name empty key. And let's say we don't want to attach any value to it. So to do this, you simply have to use the keyword none. And now you can go ahead and execute this code or rather we should print the dictionary now in order to check what happened. And now let's go ahead and execute this. And as you can see that we indeed have another key which goes by the name empty key, but it has no value attached to it. This means the value attached to it is of the type none. This brings us to the next way of adding new keys to a existing dictionary. So the second way to add a key to a dictionary is to use the update method. The update method accepts two arguments that is the key and the value and then updates the dictionary with the new key value pairs. Similar to the previous method, 
if a key is already present in the dictionary, it gets overwritten with the new value. So now let's go ahead and let's try and add the key C++ which has the value 2 attached to it with the help of the update method. So once again, we have to use the name of our dictionary which is D in this case and then a dot and now we have to use the name of the method that is update and now within this update method we have to pass the key value pair that we want to add to our dictionary. So in this case the key value pair is C++ which is the key and 2 which is the value. Let's go ahead and print the dictionary after it has been updated with the new key. Okay, that's it. Now let's go ahead and execute this. And there we go. As expected, the new key was added to the dictionary. Now an advantage of using the update method is that you can add multiple key value pairs at once in the dictionary. So let's say we want to add couple of key value pairs. The first being C++ and 2 and the second being C such that the key attached to it is 3. Now how do we do this with the help of the update method? Now the syntax to update the dictionary with more than one key value pair using the update method is slightly different. So let's have a look at that syntax. As usual you have to use the name of the dictionary dot update and now within the update method you have to pass the key value pairs as tuples within a list. So what do I mean? This is a list and now within this list you have to create couple of tuples such that each tuple will have the key value pair. Now the first key value pair that we want to add is C++ which has the value 2 attached to it while the second tuple will contain the next key value pair such that C is the key while 3 is the value attached to it. This is how you can add multiple key value pairs to a dictionary using the update method. Now let's go ahead and execute our code and find out if this works. And there we go. As you can see C++ and C are the new keys added to the dictionary to which 2 and 3 are the new values attached. Until now, we saw how we can add a new key to a already existing dictionary. But now let's consider another scenario wherein you have been given couple of dictionaries as you can see on the screen D1 and D2 and now you have to merge the key value pairs of both the dictionaries and create a third dictionary which will contain all the key value pairs of D1 and D2. So this means you have to create another dictionary D3 such that it consists of all the key value pairs present in D1 as well as D2. So how are you going to do that? This can be done with the help of Python's dictionary unpacking feature wherein you have to use the double asterisk operator to merge two dictionaries. Thus the dictionary unpacking feature will create a new dictionary and unpack all the key value pairs of the given dictionaries into a new dictionary. A point to be noted in this case is that if there are duplicate keys then they will be automatically resolved by this method. So let's go ahead and find out how we can merge D1 and D2 and store them in a third dictionary D3 with the help of the double asterisk operator. All you have to do is create your new dictionary which is D3 in this case and then within curly brackets which is used to create a dictionary you have to use the double asterisk operator before mentioning the name of the first dictionary comma and then once again you have to use the double asterisk operator and then mention the name of the second dictionary. That's it. This will merge the key value pairs of both the dictionaries and you will have the desired output. Let's go ahead and print our dictionary which is D3 and now let's execute our code and there we go. As you can see D3 has all the key value pairs present in D1 as well as D2. Now if you look closely then you'll find that D1 and D2 have the same key which is value 
And now in this case, it was automatically resolved by the dictionary unpacking feature wherein only one key from both the dictionaries was selected, which happens to be this key value pair of dictionary D2. So the final dictionary, which is D3, looks something like this. Now to further clarify things, let's say this is value 2 while this is value 3 and this is value 4. Now we have unique keys present in both the dictionaries. So let's go ahead and execute our code once again. And now as you will find that all the key value pairs present in both the dictionaries are reflected in the third dictionary. So that's how you can use the dictionary unpacking feature and merge couple of dictionaries and store them in another dictionary. Now let's say you are using Python 3.9. In that case, you can directly merge both the dictionaries with the help of the merge operator. Now you must remember that you cannot use the merge operator in any version which is lower than Python 3.9. So the merge operator resembles a bar and this is how you can use it to merge the two dictionaries. Here D3 is the new dictionary wherein we will be storing the key value pairs of both the dictionaries. D1 is the first dictionary, D2 is the second dictionary and between them we have the merge operator. Let's execute our code and there we go. As expected, D3 has all the key value pairs present in D1 and D2. Another advantage of using Python 3.9 is that not only do you have the merge operator at your disposal, but you also have the update operator which will help you to update a certain dictionary. For example, let's say we want to update the dictionary D1 such that it consists of all the keys that are already present within it, which is value 1 and value 2 as well as the keys which are present in dictionary D2 which are value 3 and value 4. So to do that you have to use the update operator which looks like this. That is a bar followed by the equals sign. That's it. Now let's go ahead and print D1 before we have updated it and then let's print D1 again once we have updated it. Now let's execute our code and there we go. As you can see, initially this is how D1 looked and when we updated it such that it consists of all the key value pairs present in it as well as in D2, it looks like this. So with this, we come to the end of this lecture and I hope you learned something from it. If this video helped you, please give it a like and subscribe our channel for more lectures which come up almost every day on our channel. Goodbye.